so when we go ahead and do this phono preamp test, um, basically we want to know if this the response of the phono preamp um, corresponds to the basically the RIAA equalization, which which what that does it it cuts the trebles and it boosts the bass. Um, it's actually built into the circuitry. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And of course, RIAA, that stands for Record Industry Association of America. And the RIAA equalization, which that is a standard, and I think that was agreed upon by the record manufacturers in 1953. So it does go way back. So I'm using my um, AC millivolt meter, which is integrated into my distortion meter. I could have just used my heat kit or something, but the heat kit would just be getting in my way. Um, also, I'm doing this by measuring the voltages. I'm not using any decibel scales. Um, that would probably be easier. That's going to be the subject of another video because I think yeah, uh, you got to learn how to do this this way too. And I'm also going to probably do a video on showing how to do everything with the uh, oscilloscope, which build basically both of these videos are probably going to build upon this video. So that's the reason I am reading the going to be reading the voltages and not using the dB scales. So in case you want to know how strong of a signal I'm feeding into the preamp. Uh, inputs I've got my scope now hooked to my uh, audio generator and I've got it set up to where I'm reading about 15 millivolts peak to peak uh, if you don't have a scope of course or you can't your scope doesn't go down that low uh, what you're gonna have to do then is just go ahead and go online and do a conversion basically with this level you just have to experiment around a little bit you can't put it too low because you still want to have a usable signal and then you can't do it too high because you don't want to overload the system either because you have to figure like um, with the RIAA equalization the base is going to be boosted about 18 dB which I think is about eight times so for example let's just say just just take an arbitrary number if you fit in let's say 20 millivolts right um, whatever peak to peak or RMS then if you times that by 8 I think that would be 18 dB so let's say 20 millivolts uh, RMS would end up being 160 millivolts um, because you take the 20 times 8 so that's something you just gotta watch out for you definitely cannot uh, feed in too high of a signal and these things here of course they're gonna be straight going straight into the uh, phono plugs in the back here and um, these I just bought online somewhere I just plug in like that but they're pretty basically pretty handy to have and here you can see where I'm grabbing the signal from this is the tape rec on my recorder I guess that would also be tape um, out I think yeah I think it would be tape out and that just goes to the other end here and here's what my um, AC voltmeter is going to be attached to and the oscilloscope the oscilloscope of course again uh, that's just for monitoring purposes so I can watch a signal now here's a signal from the tape output that's how this looks now now here's what a chart like this is supposed to look like um, if you go online and you just give in like uh, frequency response graph or a blank that you might have to try out some different combinations so you get a blank piece of paper and you'd have to basically download and print that out um, so I still gotta go ahead and, and fill this in here and I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plot the RIAA um, equalization curve and then my other plots gonna be the actual output from this uh, receiver I'm testing so I can go ahead and compare the two you can see here the chart that I have it was inadequate for my purposes so I went ahead and filled in more 
frequency intervals and also I uh, put in dBs here and I got zero as a reference. I've also already started plotting in the RIAA equalization curve which starts up here at I think it's about because the base boost is going to be about I think it's um, around 18 dB and then it's going to continue to drop it's going to look something like I think down here at the end here now I could, after 10,000 Hertz I couldn't fit everything on here um, here between 10,000 Hertz and 20,000 Hertz so I'm kind of guesstimating that 15,000 Hertz is right in between there of course as you see here it's 20 30 40 50 70 100 and at the end it gets uh, more or less scrunched up of course this is logarithmic if, if you were if everything were to be equidistant the from from if the whole complete span is from 20 to 20,000 Hertz you can imagine the first uh, 100 Hertz would only be would only be a tiny little a little sliver here and we couldn't see any response at all that's why this graph is like this basically uh, is like this but of course um, logarithms are a subject all by themselves so I'm gonna go ahead and start I'm gonna color this in of course this is just an approximation of any errors here they're because of my uh, poor penmanship and artistic work so I just drew that here and here you can see uh, when you play something back through the phono preamp the bass are boosted and the trebles basically are turned down that's how that works and of course if you uh, when of course a record is pressed a record is manufactured it's the opposite way your bass are going to be turned down and then your trebles are going to be basically boosted so that curve would go up kind of like this way again any errors are strictly on a part it would have something to do with my chart or with my with my plotting here so let me go ahead and um, begin with the test I'm going to go ahead and um, start out with a thousand Hertz signal that's going to be my first plot and then I'm going to go ahead I'm going to work up or work down so I'm finally ready what you're looking at here is the uh, waveform of the tape out I'm just using the oscilloscope to monitor that and that way if I use this I don't have to be worried about the here the loudness control or anything you can see I'm gonna go ahead and press the loudness control nothing happens uh, I can move the bass treble nothing happens use the volume nothing happens so that's not affected by none of that all this is doing is going in through the uh, basically the through the phono preamp and uh, that's what I'm looking for so again I'm gonna go ahead and start out at a thousand Hertz then make a little mark on my chart and then go from there so before I continue on I have to mention that I'm doing this for one channel you'd actually have to do this for both channels so you'd either you'd have to make two plots like this or you'd have to use just uh, different color uh, markers so I think that about uh, talks it about up so let me go ahead and start so now I'm going to go ahead and take my first reading which is my reference reading everything else is going to be judged against that compared to that and that's going to be at a thousand Hertz so I've got the thousand Hertz set up and here's my reading here I'm using this AC voltmeter I had to get the heat kit out of the way because I don't have enough room and you can see here it's on a one volt scale and it's producing the output is now close to almost 500 millivolts I'd say around somewhere around 490 millivolts and that's actually that's going to be my standard now so now I go ahead and I go to my next reading which is going to be 
at a frequency of 2000 Hertz and um, if you remember the RIAA curve which goes downward as the frequency gets higher now if I take a look at the voltmeter it should be going down and it was over here first now it's already going down there so that is perfectly correct now I'm gonna go ahead and run through all the frequencies uh, up to 15,000 Hertz which is the end of the RIA equalization curve and then I'm gonna go back to a thousand and I'm going to go the other way I'm gonna go all the way down to 30 Hertz and of course my readings should get higher and higher also I have to add your your audio generator you need to make sure that the output is stays the same so you might have to do some uh, adjusting when you every time you change the frequency that output has got to be the same or else your readings basically going to go off okay I'm going to go ahead and do all the rest of the readings write down the voltages uh, write them down and then figure stuff out I don't need to show this on camera because it's kind of boring to watch so once we have all of our measurements which were from 30 to 15,000 Hertz we have to see how our curve compares to the RIAA curve and the easiest way to do this at least for me is just to go online um, there's a website it's called Sing Peel Audio I'm gonna go ahead and put the link uh, in my write-up to this and all you there all you have to do there is if you remember my reference voltage at a thousand Hertz was 495 millivolts and then the measured voltage say the thousand Hertz was the reference and then I decided to have my next text test frequency upwards was 2000 and the voltage I got from there I'm gonna put in here and this automatically figures out your gain or your loss. I'm just going to go ahead and run through um, test frequencies real fast. So the 495 which was 0.495 volts is the reference frequency. Now at 2000 Hertz it was 360 millivolts. So that's 0.360. So we've got our voltages in here now. At 0.495 the reference at a thousand Hertz and 0.360 the measured voltage at 2000 Hertz we know from looking at the RIA curve we should get a drop so all we have to do is hit the calculate button and here it says minus 2.76 now DB now looking at my chart it says here if your test frequency is 2000 Hertz and then you should be getting minus 2.6 dB and I'm getting 2.76 so that's really it's pretty close any error measurements you're going to be in the in the preamp itself and also in my calculation as far as uh, my vision is concerned so I'm going to try another one um, which to reference again I can leave the reference as it is and then I'll just reset the measured voltage and reset the gain so now my lowest measurement was at it was at um, 15,000 Hertz and then only 75 millivolts was coming out which is 0 0.075 0 0.075 and I should be getting, according to my chart, minus 17.2 dB. If, if you remember, the chart slopes down. So, downward to the right. So, okay, this, this is not right here. Let me reset this again. That's my browser hanging up. Okay, do it again. So, minus 16.39. And at that 15,000 hertz, I should be losing minus 17.2 dB. So, basically, 
pretty well on money. So I'm going to go up now at my lowest frequency, which was 30 hertz. Um, I'm getting 4,200 4, millivolts or 4.2 volts. I'm going to try that one last time. 4, 2, 0, 0. Let me go ahead and reset the gain. Well, it's going to reset that again. Okay. No, I got to put 4.2, not 4,200 volts. That's the problem. So, reset. So, I had to reset that again. Sometimes you might have to reset that a couple of times. It works with my, my browser's not working right for some reason. I'm having problems with this the last couple of weeks. I'm using Firefox. Um, so, and then our gain should be at 30 hertz, should be plus 18.6 dB. And here it's showing 18.5. So that's pretty well on the money. Now I can go ahead and do all of the frequencies like that. And then go ahead and plot my chart. Or I can just go ahead and put it in the table. Uh, either way. So this is how my completed chart looks. Um, I use the online calculator from Sengpio Audio to do that. And you can see basically, I mean, my curve follows the curve as it should be. Any errors due to my reading the voltmeter wrong or my poor here artmanship. So that's basically it. Um, also, this is the chart that I actually used for um, as a reference. See, now things should be easy. One, here's the frequencies that I'm using to plot, and here's the actual the response. This is this is of course um, this is in decibels. So maybe I should have put dB over here since I put hertz over there. But anyways, you um, get the drift. It's kind of a convoluted way of. Uh, kind of a convoluted old school way of doing things. Oh, another thing I should mention now, since my results here are uh, actually pretty good, if say for example I had like a minus whatever a 6 dB difference or 8 or 10 dB difference then I'd probably be a little bit worried but if it was minor enough it was 1 or 2 dB now me I'm the kind of person I'm not going to get excited about it so uh, thanks for watching.